Welcome everybody here on Twitch Chats and everybody on YouTube who's watching this video later on over there for our first deck of the day, which is going to be Gruul Arcbow. Yesterday we played a Selesnya deck, we call it Selesnya Titans, that featured Vivian's Arcbow, and it was really, really good for us. And so we're going to try uh, some more Vivian's Arcbow, but instead of going green-white, we're going moving over to green-red, where we can have some more really big creatures uh, that you know, help us attack. That's that's all we're doing here. So we got Spellbreaker, Phoenix, Ilrog, Ravager Worm. With all of these, Ilrog in particular seems like it, it's going to work really well with Arcbow. Where if we can put Ilrog in at end step, at end speed, it should be able to help us attack with Ilrog more, or like uh, you know, more reliably, I guess. Uh, so that's that's a real good one. We saw how good Null High Ferox was with with Arcbow. Um, and as you can tell, we have our spell count to a minimum because of Nullhide Ferox. We just have the Arc Bows and the Domries that uh, we can have both of them in before. Or even if we play Nullhide first, that if we hit another land drop at five mana, we could still pay for a Domri if, if need be. We could pay the Nullhide tax. Uh, but yeah, this is just an aggressive Gruul deck. Um, really, really uh, looking to beat like the control decks uh, for sure here. And then our sideboard, you can tell how it's uh, tuned for aggro. We got our four wild growth walkers and four lava coils that we're going to be bringing in against aggro. Uh, basically, the the aggro decks will need the extra removal, so we'll bring in the removal spells. Then we'll also have the wild growth walkers to pair with our jade lights and branch walkers. Um, and then we got cinder vines for nexus. Of course, that's just a nexus is just a really strong deck, and really like having all these cinder vines in that matchup. Fiery Cannonades basically for Mono White, how they get to go wide. Uh, you could play it against Mono Red also. Not sure if it's too necessary against Mono Red, but definitely definitely Mono White. And Mono White is like a deck that I don't really want to face too much with this one. Um, and then we got Vivians for two other cards against Control here with these little Vivians. So there we go. Let's uh, give it a try. Yeah, if there's Celestia Tokens, yeah, there's like a Tokens deck. You run into that. Candidate it up if you run into a hero precinct one deck um, All right, we're gonna play in ranked today. We are at Diamond tier three the beginning of the day today and our first three decks uh, We're gonna try our hand in ranked not the part parhelion two gates deck. That one's a little janky For our last deck of the day um We'll go to our normal constructed queue for that. You're playing Arcbow and Bant? Yeah. Getting instant speed, Lyra's to block is just awesome. All right, good looking hand. Brown. Hmm. Ravager Worm's like the perfect card to like put in with Ilrog. But I think if we're attacking with Ilrog, we're gonna be good. So I'm not gonna keep that on top and have have my draw step be that. Hey, what's up, Gatsby? attack basically test them do you have kaya's wrath next turn yes or no if the answer is no good luck okay well that that'll help save them Um, so Gatsby, you can check out the Parhelion 2 deck. I basically just kind of put it in gates. I was really trying to think of, like, what to actually do with the card and everything. Um, and how, how we could play it. And I think, and one of my friends gave me the idea of, like, just putting it in the gates shell where you can get a lot of mana. Hmm. 
Hmm. So obviously we could just be putting that into Akaya's Wrath, but also if they just have like a, a removal spell for the Spellbreaker, then we're not attacking for lethal. They haven't acted like they had Akaya's Wrath. Also, and Jade Light should have been able to set up our draw for like looking for an arc bow or something like that. So basically I just want these two Vivians in. Um... But everything, like all of our cards are pretty good in this matchup. I guess I'm just going to replace... Domri with Vivian. Hey, what's up, Rex? Cool, glad you're liking Gates, Gatsby. Um, yeah, if you arc bow in a frilled mystic, it's a counter spell. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, I wonder if we should make like a Sultai arc bow deck with. A but like four frilled mystic, four hostage taker, some chupacabras, and so like you activate it for four, and you're always getting like a hostage taker, chupacabra, or frilled mystic. I'm not gonna worry too much about thief. I think we kill them before thief kills us, and that's that's only if they have thief. Cool. All right, good. Glad you like it, Gatsby. Um, I don't think we keep the five lander. All right, we're going to mulligan this. Ravager Worm's awesome at destroying. You know, it could eat a Thieves Andy, but it can also, like, destroy an S Kanta that flips. It does a really good job of pressuring a Planeswalker. Huh. Phoenix is good. I want to try to draw a two mana card in these first two draws. Because really, like, if we're keeping that Phoenix on top, we're playing it on like turn five. We already have a, a four drop. Let's do you. Nothing. Enough. Let Teferi shuts down this Vivian. No, I am not making this up as I go. You get another spellbreaker? Hmm. <laughs> yeah, thanks for hanging out, Siege Rhino. Trust me, I have a plan. All right, well, we can kill Big Teferi. It's good news. Hardly my worst defeat. So now, if they have a cast down, they could kill the Ferox, but I've lost so much already. I won't lose more. Starting over is the only way. 
Honestly, J Light may be the better, the best card to actually get against Control with the Double Explorer. The Illrog and the Ronus are a lot sexier, but remember we can't, we can't play anything instant speed because it's a fairy. And we don't have anything to put in with the boar. It's not really a combat trick when this Teferi's around, though. So assuming next turn they're going to bounce the Ferox. All right, I'm going to go with what I think is the best play, but it's not the most fun play by any means. It's not the highest upside play. Five loyalty? Why does that thing need five loyalty? Let me show you what was lost. Hey, that was uncalled for. Yeah, Esper's. Yeah, you need a lot of rares and mythics for Esper, especially like with all the dual lands and everything. Don't worry. Three color decks. So like three color control decks are basically always like that. Basically, seeing if we see a, a spell breaker. Things begin and end in nature. We can't play instant speed stuff, unfortunately. Yeah, Illrogs are on the bottom. Let's try this. We have three Illrogs in here, I believe. Perfect. Love that card. There is wonder in a blade of grass. All right, now I can play instant speed now again. What? Um, I don't want Arcbow to get countered. Ugh. So I guess I wait on it. Need that Ravager Worm back.
And of course, give our Llanowar Elf Vigilant so it can attack and still add mana. You fight like a city brat. Are you telling the Llanowar Elf that you fight like a city brat? Like, who, who are you yelling that at? All right, one card in hand. I'm going to try this Arcbow. Hooray! Keep the Force in hand to be able to ditch. Still got five mana to activate with Arcbow, or, or of course we can cast the Jade Light Ranger and some speed also. Yeah, I would not have been surprised if they had a veto or a negate there, but it's just one card. It's it's better than giving them the waiting until they have Ascanta flipped where they can use Ascanta to look for a counter spell. Right on schedule. They got a lot of those. So I'm not casting Jade Light Ranger anymore, but we'll ditch this forest and see what we get with this Arc Bow that we'll spin the wheel with. That's more like it. All right, we'll take it. Give us another land. Oh, uh, I guess I'm not. All right, just in case they have another moment of craving, it's only a I'm sending the two at that to fairy. All right, we'll minus this. Wait, you think nature is kind? Jeez. All right, we can cast our things at the speed again. Man, they they have no chance. <laughs> like, what are they supposed to do? They have to, like, deal with this board and we have, like, double instant speed Ferox? That, like, hardly kills anything. <laughs> oh, those Feroxes. Gotta get your paws up for the Feroxes. Rawr. That's what they do. Get, get those paws up. I would not want to play against this deck if I was playing Esper. <laughs> that's, the, that's the Ferox. Yeah, just 12 power, 12 power hexproof flash. All right, this deck's looking good so far. Where's that G mana? All right, I guess I should have specified I wanted more than just one G mana. Please. Aren't you working, MGG bot? There you go. Uh-oh. Red decks usually kill your land war elf. And that's sad. No, don't do it. Boo. Sweet. 
green mana? Uh, it's not green mana, but we can cast it next turn. I don't think we should ditch it. And, like, try to hit the green mana underneath it, because if the green mana is underneath it, we'll just draw it with the branch walker also. Dude, man, I am so sorry, Dan. I am so, so sorry. Dude, it's all... It's all okay. I'm so sorry. We are getting run over here. But thanks thanks for everything that you do here. Dan, for the MTG community with MTG bot, it is just incredible. And... One of the very best things with Magic Streaming is MTG Bot. Yeah, we got that clutch for us there, but we're still kind of getting run over here. Wow, no attacks? That's nice. Uh, Dan just had his, his grandfather pass, or just had his funeral. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's it's always a tough thing. Funerals are tough. We're basically never going to cast this arc bow because of the null hides. That's okay. We just need to stay alive. We'll start attacking with the Phoenix next turn. We'll have the Spellbreaker back on defense also. We're hoping they draw a land or two. No, we don't have any blast zones in the sideboard. Uh, we have, we have wild growth walkers. Um, we have lava coils, wild growth walkers, and one uh, thing that deals two damage to every creature. One of those things. Honestly, I wonder if I should attack with null hide instead. No. Nah. Yeah, fiery cannonade, one of those. And Synchrise getting that gifted sub from Boot. Thank you, Santa Boot. And get those hype boats out there, Synchrise. Or Synchrist. Maybe Synchrist. Who knows? All right, so playing Arcbow. If I want to play Arcbow here, I have to tap the Land War off also. But I do kind of want to play the Arcbow. That means I wouldn't be attacking with Phoenix. Other option, 
and Tilo getting in on the sub hype as well. Thanks, Tilo. Or I could just play the Jade Light Ranger and attack with the Phoenix. I guess I'd, I'd do that. Lasso lands. Now next turn I can play the Vivian with the six mana with playing the mountain. And we won't have to tap the land war off so we can keep it back on D. Uh, Jade Light being a 2-1 is a little unfortunate because of another Chain Whirler would be pretty bad clearing out two blockers. Yeah, another Chain Whirler is almost lethal. It put us down to one if they just go Chain Whirler swing out. So we just got to hope they don't draw that. Yeah, so yeah, that'd be lethal, of course, on the way back. But so like they w they wouldn't do that. But I'm just saying that we need to be mindful of of chain whirler plus like attacking. I'm kind of scared to attack with the Phoenix or how much they were thinking about everything last turn. Yeah, yeah, this is a really weird battlefield against Red for sure. They usually draw a lot more burn spells. They've only drawn two burn spells, at least that we know about. I'm gonna put the brakes on. A little, a little worried about like burn spells and stuff. I don't have any life game. Life gain game one. Oh, geez. That's a great card. I have to take it. Can't give them three cards. Three cards are going to do more than four damage. They have infinite mana with all these Steamkins. Assuming we're dead. They did not draw lands, it looks like. Looks like they had all they were just drawing burn spells the last three three draws. Unfortunate. Um definitely want both of those. I'm not sure about cannonade. I just don't know. And take out Ravager Worm and Phoenix. Um, and then uh, one Arc Bow, maybe two Arc Bows. Maybe two arc bows. 
I don't really want to cut Land War Elf, even though Land War Elf isn't really... I mean, it's just such a good card, but it can get swept up really easily. Yeah, I could go with one Domri, but I, I really do like the Domri fight part. Ravagerworm's just a tad expensive, and Phoenix just doesn't really block things well, and it's easy for them to get rid of the other part. Yeah, maybe, I mean, I could have been attacking with the Feroxes, but, I don't know, like, we were so close to dying. Hmm. That's a lot of big creatures. Let's do it. On the draw, I would be mulligating this. <laughs> yeah, that TKS it's a it's a thought not seer with a tie, so it's a it's a Todd not seer. Gilgate, we need you earlier. You played against nothing but mono red tonight. Mono red's really good. Mono red, real good. Yeah, hoping they don't have Lava Coil, of course, for the Spellbreaker. Um, if they have to Firebrand plus, like, Lightning Strike, like, that's not so bad. You know, get rid of two, you know, have the Spellbreaker at least be a two for one. And I can't attack. Oh, I guess I could. Spellbreaker has haste. Or sorry, it has hexproof. That's what that's the word I was looking for. Hexproof. Ooh, frenzy. I should have attacked last turn. Parhelion has no entry animation? Oh, man. We hadn't played a Parhelion 2 yet. This girl get Gilgate is really sad. I should have made this attack last turn. This is just going to eat the firebrand.
Really need that raise bore in this turn. Hey, what's up, Oslin? Thanks for that resub there. Two month streak. Sub number four on the day. Could have them at eight right now. Gross. That's really gross. I have two chain whirlers to block now, double first strike blockers. Gotta find Lava Coil. It's a real important card for us to draw. We, we could just be dead though. Like with all the mana these Steamkins get to make. We could just be dead. Depending on how Frenzy hits and everything. Because they have like the Lightning Strike, the Shock still. Can just hit another land, please? Just hit a land. And only have Lightning Strike and Shock. Yeah, Frenzy with double Steamkin it is really rough. Just Steam just turn to Steamkin and if you don't if you don't have your lava coil, if they have Steamkin, you don't have lava coil, you're just kinda always dead. It's just how it is. I don't really see how getting this ill rock here is gonna help. Maybe. I mean I'm just gonna play like Arcbow next turn. And then put an Ilrog the turn the next turn. And then attack with Ronus the turn after. Yeah, Domri would have cost five mana though. We already had like the Ilrog that we'd need to put into play at the five mana spot. And Unfortunately, the Gruel Guildgate kind of cost us this one of not having the Ilrog on turn 5 and having to wait a turn. That really cost us. But our, our hand was so close to a mulligan. I really hate not having any removal against them. 
Kind of thinking that maybe I should have the cannonade in there also, especially on the play, because a cannonade on turn three can take out a steamkin uh, that was played on turn two when you're on the play. I probably should have mulliganed that hand. If we had none of our eight sideboard cards that we were bringing in, nothing to do on turn two against red. That's probably, that's just, I guess it's just never going to work. We couldn't attack through two Steamkins, or two Chain Whirlers. Double first strike gets us. Like at that point. All right, let's. We got red again. Let's see how we do this time. I'm probably just activating Arcbow for four next turn instead of playing Jade Light Ranger. But Spellbreaker is like, you know, it's our best three mana hit being a 4-4. Four, four. Next turn we're just going to activate the Arcbow for four and then the following turn we'll have Ilrog. Well, never mind. That's the four drop I wanted to find. Stop. Okay. Okay. We're doing it. We had like two best draws in a row. Good, hit a land, hit another land. Another land. Built. Another land, another land. We get to attack. Um, I guess we just activate Arcbow and see if we hit Spellbreaker for haste. Because we're like dead if, if they untap. Like, yeah, like we're, we're certainly dead. Ravager Worm. Yeah, that would, that would even be the best. All right, let's go six here. We hit Ravager Worm. Wow. We are getting lucky today. At least this game. Got lucky on that Frenzy turn. We drew like Null Hide and then Ronus, like our two best draws. That's a lot. That's a lot of damage. That was the dream right there. <laughs> yeah, now that's a lot of damage.
All right, perfect. All right, let's get the cannonade in. Let's try it out. Um, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I need Ravager Worm. What if I take out Ronus? They can like chump block my other creatures. Ronus is kind of only good with with these things. Maybe Ravager Worm's better than Ronus. On the draw, yeah, maybe not on the draw. I don't know. We gotta kill Steamkin. Gotta kill Steamkin. All right, so this gets a sixty-two. We can take out one Arc Bow. That's sixty-one. Am I supposed to like? Basically, should I should I like take out Land War Elves because of Chain Whirler and like play like Cannonade and Phoenix instead of Land War Elves and us just be a little slower, but then have like Cannonade and Phoenix. On the draw, like on the play, I like Lanowar Elf, but on the draw, I don't know if I do. Actually, I, th I think I kind of want to do that. Let's do that. We'll put a couple Phoenixes in here on this cannonade. Let's hopefully have Lava Coil. All right, we're doing it. Great hand. We can take out this Steamkin. Ooh, it's not even Steamkin. All right, well, that thing I can just block with Branch Walker, so I'm just going to play this Branch Walker here. I start getting on the board. I'm going to save Lava Coil in case they... Like, some people just have... <clears throat> Rekindling Phoenix, or even like chain. I'd rather, much rather kill a Chain Whirler because that card's more problematic. Via Shina Pyromancer is usually a little easier to deal with. Let's tilt. I guess they could have another Lava Runner or a Firebrand or a Legion War Boss. Wow. We are so, so smart. Gonna throw a Wither's Lightning at us? Sure. We're so smart, so thin. Ugh! No! Like the only card we could lose to. Ugh. You're so close. And Frenzy. Thanks, Casey. At least these wild growth walkers are good bait to eat up burn spells and not us. And you know, things that don't kill us. Kill that. May need Arcbow to find us. Explore creatures. Alright, never mind. Good, they hit another three drop. That's after drawing, that's good. Yes, yeah, so just resolve. Ugh, Shockland? Do we shock to put Ilrog in? No, we can't shock.
You think I should shock? I think about just ar activating arc bow for four. I'm just trying to, you know, hit Spellbreaker, Nullhide, or Phoenix. The thing about Ulrog is it does give us, like, lethal attacking next turn. Like, you know, we are attacking for 12. I mean, we'll we'll get the we'll get a blocker with arc bow, presumably. I don't think I want to shock. Yeah, I don't really want to go to five. <clears throat> Null hide. Null hide. There you are. What's up, beast? All right, now we need to draw land, untap land, and then I can lava coil this chain roller and swing for lethal. Wow, we're doing it. We're doing it. We really did it. We really did it. So it looks like our red matchup's pretty easy. All we have to do is just hit perfect for two games in a row, every draw, <laughs> and like every activation of Arkabo. That was sweet. Yeah, Null Hide is awesome. Dude, Arc Mode never misses. You get to see so many cards. You get to look at four cards. All you need is the one Null Hide. Ugh. Oh, we got a resub from Da Bears. Da Bears. Thanks to Bears. I'll take it. We got some bears in our deck, too. Getting some help from the bears. Yeah, love the stream. Thanks for their entertainment. Keep up the good work. Aw. Breeding pool. Let's do this. Looks like a Reclamation deck. Shocking and Breeding Pool for Opt. So let's get our creatures down fast. I guess that is like 3 power haste. I should keep that. I guess it's two power haste. But we're so we hit them for fifteen. It doesn't doesn't change any clock though. Hmm. If they didn't have growth spiral, we would. I'm pretty sure we would just like win this. Like they're gonna be just too slow if they don't grow spiral, but now with Growth Spiral we've got a real game. Hopefully no wreck. No wreck. Pass turn. Pass the turn. Ugh, turn three reclamation. Yuck. Yuck, I say. Well, we'll see if we can kill them on our turn four.
Might as well try. See if they also have a fog or a bounce spell. Maybe one of the two. Either. All right, turn four kill. Now let's get all these cinder vines in. And what are we taking out? Domri? Hmm. Arcbow. Arcbow's probably just a little slow. Just maybe play cinder vines instead. All right, sounds good. Yeah, this deck packs quite a punch. <laughs> you never what, wait. What did you never see before? The turn four kill. So this hand's just too slow uh, on the draw. Like this is this is just too slow in this matchup. We need uh, not that. I guess we're getting this. Like we need like a little acceleration with Lanor Elf or Cinder Vines or something like that. Jeez, I have so many of these Illrogs. Should we have a two-two split? on the gods. I could certainly see that. Instead of we have right now we have three Ilrog, one Ronus. Ronus is pretty good. Yeah, I I could certainly see playing two and two. Two Ilrog, two Ronus. Hey what's up Nidirat? Just had an amazing burger. Very nice. Rar. See? He throws throws his paws up. Rar. We got two turn clock. That's just kind of like what we got here. We kill him on our turn six. <laughs> Are y'all telling me you don't throw your paws up every time you play a null hide? Look at all this hex proof. All that hex proof. I got I got hex proof, or Domri does. This does, this does, this does. What are you trying to bounce over there? Nothing. You can bounce this thing, I guess. Crumble cruds with the sub. Thanks, Crumble Cruds. Spellbreaker may be your favorite card in standard. That's a good one. That's a good favorite card. Yeah, this is a this is a well designed card. Yeah, they could combo off. They could they could certainly kill us. They just have, you know, Nexus here and kinda of continue on. They still can. We could be dead. Reclamation's a messed up card. 
basically have infinite mana. Your favorite card's the Smug Dragon Overlord Niv Mizzy. Which one? Five color Niv Mizzy? That's one of my favorite cards. I love five color Niv Mizzet. That card's awesome. I like our chances on the play, though. We were on the draw with a five-card hand here, and we were one attack away from winning. I like our chances on the draw for game three. That's just a spell that just says add five mana to your mana pool this turn and then every following turn you add like eight, nine, ten. It's just like, that's just such a, an exorbitant amount of mana every turn. You know, if you think about like Circuitous Route, which is a good card, which is like four, go find two lands and put them into play tapped and you can start using those next turn. Just, just untap some this turn. It's crazy. I haven't played uh, Grixis yet. Playing that up next. They cannot whiff anymore. <laughs> Lotus Garden. Question was, so what do you think they will do once rotation hits? I like the idea of Arena Modern, but you never know. Yeah, like they're that's what they've already said. Like that's that's what's going to happen, is there's going to be another format. I haven't really specified non-rotating or anything like that. It's just there's going to be another format where you can still use the cards that rotate. Why can't we just find it one Cinder Vines in any of these? So you'll still be able to use those cards that rotate. I don't know exactly where. They've said it a couple of times. I don't know exactly where. Hmm. It's kind of a weird hand to mulligan. Just how this matchup is. Magic does not hate me, Daniston. That's not why we can't find Cinder Vines. That is... It's not a healthy way to think, either. Oh, sorry, that was supposed to be a joke. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't really like the word hate. Yeah, we we're getting this boar god in like every single hand. Draw land.
Okay. Like our fastest way of killing our opponent is landing the Domri this turn and trying to get Ilrog in play next turn and have uh, the following turn after that killing them with playing Spellbreaker Haste, Ilrog putting in Ronis, and that's lethal. At least it's it's 20. So we need to draw another land for that to happen, of course, here. It is an honor to meet you. Hmm. I know I noted this somewhere. So now Tamio has the Karn thing also of just enters and just says, I am Tamio. Just like last time we had Karn of I am Karn. Hmm. Our seven card hand would have put up more of a fight than this five card to hand is, of course, if I would have just kept the seven card hand, but that's not. That doesn't mean like the next time I should like definitely keep the seven card hand because of like what happened with our six and our five being so bad. If one of our green lands on the, the seven card hand was an untapped land for a turn one land war elf, I was certainly keeping it. That was the the big killer was none of neither of our lands came into play untapped. Can only punish you if they catch you. <laughs> hmm. Little here. I'm not beating that. Be able to be out with multiple activations with the Nexus is here. I'm not beating that. How far deep that thing digs. So we have to just. Suck it up here. It's possible they, you know, whiff here without having that Tamio. But with the Tamio, 
we didn't have a chance. All right, please draw Cinder Vines, blow up that Ascanta. Well, never mind. Good seven card hands for us win this matchup. We just did not have good seven card hands, and we we had five card hands on both of those two games that we lost. But I I think we win that matchup all the time with good seven card hands. We just didn't have them. Like our five card hands had like Ilrogs in them too that we couldn't couldn't cast or just never were able to. I think if we keep seven, we win that matchup. It's a pretty good hand. All right, Espa. We did pretty good against Esper last time. Went in 2-0. We'll see if we do that again. We have a whole lot of Phoenixes here. I'm sick of grinding for lands. Why don't they have a way to buy them? You can buy them. You can just you just buy enough packs. To get a wow card and then the wow card you use on the land and especially if you buy the packs of the set that whatever land you want is in it you may get lucky and um open up the land We have two two gates in this deck. They have certainly cost us at some points. Possibly should take take one of them out for a forest. So either they're shocking in for Chemister's Insight, or they're shocking in for Absorb, because they know about all these creatures in my hand. Like, they know about all these Phoenixes in particular. Yes, I did Re Republic. They're going to field a room before the explore trigger? That'd be that'd be gas. Yeah, that's 
That's horrible timing for the opponent, but I love it. Now we can still leave like the card that we want on top. Right, so they want a moment of craving that thing. Sure. Still take it. Mm. Two Field of Ruins? Somebody doesn't like Ascanta. I think Phoenix is more valuable than Ilrog, which is why I didn't bait out um, the Absorb with Phoenix. Trust me. We need to move quickly. All right, so we'll. Honestly, it's probably better to attack 7 at Teferi. Then attack 7 at them. So we just attack that at them, they can just take it and then kill the, the Spellbreaker the on their turn with the Tyrant Scorn and everything like that. Now both these creatures can still kill Teferi. Ilrog with Dire Fleet Daredevil. That's pretty interesting. Attacking with Ilrog, you're usually doing pretty good. To be honest. But yeah, that's a that's definitely a good one. Direfully Daredevil there. I kinda wanna make a Grixis Ilrog deck. So you can put in Hostage Taker with Ilrog and then cast their creature and you put the Hostage Taker back in your hand. Gonna play this fe this other Phoenix. Hmm. Now, that, like if they if the Field of Ruin was tapped before, I would have played Ravage of Ruin. But now now the Field of Ruin's tapped again, so we can destroy the Field of Ruin. But then we don't have the haste. Yeah, Playcrafter, Chupacabra, that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah, but that's usually the problem is attacking with Ilrug. That is usually the problem. You need to slow down. Are they gonna shuffle that away with Field of Ruin now? Nope. 
Well, maybe. This isn't a keep up the pace. We haven't seen any of our four arc bows. It's our best card. Haven't seen that one yet. All right, what you doing? You're gonna let the field. All right, field of ruin gets eaten, which is a bad sign. I won't. Huh? You win. Never mind. Good sign. Why didn't they just activate field of ruin? Maybe they just don't have another basic. They only have the one basic. Hold that thought. I thought since it um. They let it get eaten that they had like a mortify for their worm. That's what I thought. This is hardly my worst defeat. Hmm. I'm gonna wait a turn before playing this Jade Light. I'm just Jade Light would just keep the Phoenix on top. If they didn't have removal for Ravager Worm, they probably just have Counter Magic. And Thought Erasures. Now Grexus is up next. You can see our order here on the left hand side. Working our way down there. I know my responsibility. You need to take a time out. I guess I'll just keep this forest in hand because if we do draw Arc Bow, we could like play Arc Bow and activate Arc Bow for five. No for a break. As well, by keeping this forest. All right, how many Teferis do we have to kill? Gotten three of them done. All right, guess three is the answer. We just have to kill three of them. All right, two Vivians in. Victory. Yeah, that was yeah, that was going to be a, a matchup for Arkbo for sure. That was an unexpected victory opponent not even fighting games 2 and 3. Um but yeah, 3 and 2 there. So we went 2 0 against Esper. We went 1-1 against Mono Red. We were pretty fortunate to beat Mono Red the time that we did, to be honest, though. I think... And then we were 0-1 against Nexus, but honestly, I think that we're good against Nexus. We just had... We had two five-card hands, games two and three, that we lost. Um, but I think I think that you're, we're going to win like a, most of the games against Nexus. Um... I think I do. I think I would prefer the two Elrog to Ronus. In here, honestly, Ronus is just really solid. Um, but yeah, this deck was really cool. This is a good one. We'll continue to play this deck more in the coming days, weeks, stuff like that. 
Vivian's Arc Bow is just awesome. And this deck attacks really well. There are so many blue control decks around in the metagame, and especially Esper. It's just you know one of the most popular decks, and I think this deck is just really, really solid against Esper. In games, you know, we were only 3-0 in games because our last Esper opponent just quit after the first game. But I, yeah, I think this deck's gonna beat Esper a really high percentage of the time. If mono red and mono white would be like the two matchups I'd be a little worried about. Um, we can win. I I was 1-0 against mono red uh, earlier today with this deck, um, and we were 1-1 here. But we saw both games are just really close and really tight, and we needed to draw well, for sure. Um, I don't think there's really better things than Coil and Wild Growth Walker, though, for the red matchup. But maybe there is. Maybe there's something better against White also. Definitely really liked the Fiery Cannon, eh? That was good. That card was good. Um, so there we go. All right, so if you're watching this video later on... Okay, oh, at if at FNM that nobody's playing Nexus, then instead of Cinder Vines, I would have some more... Some kind of anti-aggro stuff. Uh, maybe, maybe Ripjaw Raptor or Brontodon. Ripjaw Raptor is pretty solid. Is there anything that's like good at gaining life that's cheap? I don't think you really want Bond to flourishing. Scavenger. Hmm. Seems like gain life costs so much mana. What if you have Crowl Foragers? Maybe like take out two Cinder Vines for like a, a second Cannonade and a, and just play like one Crowl Foragers and just replace like one of these one of these things with the foragers. Yeah, a rip jaw. Those would be kind of be the matchups that I'd be worried about. I think our Esper matchup's really good. You know, just take just take out the two Domries, put in the two Vivians, and you're good to go. There against like Esper. And so then you basically just kinda of have to worry about aggro with your sideboard. Kind of do you know, you know your F and M, so kinda of play what you what you think will be successful at your F and M there. Think about uh Think about what cards you want to take out from the deck, and like basically think about like what like your de like what your desired sixty would look like. So you can kind of think about like what what could replace what uh, and so on. All right, uh, if you are watching this video later on YouTube, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, Gruel Arcbo looks really sweet for sure. Um, yeah, this deck's awesome. Uh, but there we go. Uh, yeah, hope you hit the subscribe button over there so you can follow along for all of the other videos, and I will see you for another video.